The Faithful and the Fallen. Is it good, bad, or ugly? And should you read this series, which has become incredibly popular in recent times on YouTube? Now, if you haven't watched any of the previous videos in the series, then it's basically a series where I take a look at some of the series I have read and discuss the good parts, the bad parts, and the ugly parts, so you can make an informed decision on whether you should read this series or not. In the past, I have discussed The Wheel of Time and the Farseer Trilogy, and today we are discussing The Faithful and the Fallen Quartet by John Gwynn. All right, let's get into it. And as always, we will start with the good. Now, firstly, The Faithful and the Fallen is a classic fantasy, but in a good way. This series has a lot of tropes we know from traditional fantasy, such as a village boy becoming a hero, a good underdog story, it has good versus evil, it has prophecies, it has magic, and so on and so on. John Gwynn takes all of those tropes we love and adds something new to it. The Face of the Fallen feels like a comfortable read since you will recognize a lot of the tropes, but it will also feel refreshing since the pacing is breakneck and Gwynn adds some really good twists to the tropes we come to love. Now, I think The Face of the Fallen is a brilliant example of utilizing what readers are fond of in the fantasy genre, but it also adds something new. Now secondly, I have to mention the pacing. Like Gwyn is known for writing books with ruthless pacing and that is especially true for The Faithful and The Fallen Quartet and also the sequel series of Blood and Bone. Now as soon as the ball starts rolling in the series at around the midway point in Malice, you will barely be able to catch a break for the rest of the series. I mean the plot accelerates and then almost keeps that ruthless pacing throughout the whole series and then this series also has accessible writing style and very short chapters. I mean, most of these chapters are like 10 pages and you have that story that just feels so ridiculously fast paced, but in a very good way, in my opinion. Now, if you love stories that almost have that addictive feel because you constantly feel like something shocking might happen, then this is the series for you. Now, thirdly in the good section, I have to mention the world building. Now, this series has a total of seven books if you also count the sequel series. So if you enjoy a world with rich history, magic, lore and many different locations and cultures, then this is a great series for that. Now, The Face of the Fallen feels like a blend of medieval and in some aspects almost like Viking inspired, which again really plays into that element of feeling familiar but also fresh. Now, there's no doubt that this series doesn't have the Malassan or the Wheel of Time scope of world building, but there's definitely more than enough for most readers and it is also really well done. Now, the world feels real and it feels like it has real life consequences, which I always appreciate. And Gwyn, he does not introduce magic magic or fantastical creatures without showing you how these things have and are impacting the world we are set in. And as a reader while you're reading this series, you will be taken across various locations in this world. So in that sense, it really feels epic. Now, fourthly, we have to talk about the action sequences. Now, if you know me well, then you know that I'm not a massive fan of action sequences or battles in fantasy. I usually prefer the build up and then the aftermath, while the fighting itself usually does very little for me when I'm reading which is why it is crazy high praise for me to actually mention the action sequences in the good part. Gwyn is truly one of the best authors I've come across when it comes to writing action. I mean, this series feels very cinematic and there is a lot of fighting in this series, but I found myself really enjoying the battle scenes, which is incredibly rare for me to say. There are very few authors I praise for writing action sequences because usually they just do very little for me, but John Gwyn, he is an exception. Now, now, fifthly, I have to mention Ruin, which is book three in the series and is to this date one of my all-time favorite books. I mean, in my opinion, this book is near perfection. It's been a while since I read it, but the amount of shocking plot twists and heartbreaking moments in this book is just absolutely insane. It's one of those few books where I literally gasped out loud at times while I was reading it because I just couldn't believe what I was reading. This book is just so ridiculously good and addictive and a book more people definitely need to read. Now sixth and lastly in the good section, I have to mention that this series has an incredible iconic animal companion. Now if you read the series then you know but all I will say is that it is a wolf and if you read Ruin book three which I literally just mentioned then you will know why I have such strong emotions for this animal companion. So if you like a good animal companion, then definitely pick up The Faithful and the Fallen. But while this series is one of my all-time favorite series, it is not perfect. So let's turn to the bad. Firstly, I know I just praised the pacing and I still stand by that. But if there's one 
primary thing I could change with this whole quartet, then it's simply that I would have slowed the pacing down just a tiny bit and also have maybe a bit less action. Fortunately for us Gwyn fans, that is exactly what John Gwyn did for his most recent series, The Bloodsworn Saga. He slowed the pacing down a bit and the series got so much better for it. Now in The Faithful and Fallen, we do have some great character moments, but sometimes I think having just a tiny few more moments where the reader is allowed to breathe would have taken this series to a whole new level. Now don't get me wrong, the action is fantastic and the pacing is what makes the series so ridiculously addictive. It's just at times it feels like it just keeps going on so ridiculously fast in the series and I personally would have enjoyed if you also had some more slow moments. Now secondly, I know I just praise the use of familiar tropes, but it is worth mentioning that if you hate classic fantasy, then this series might not be for you. Now I don't think that tropes are inherently bad or good, but this definitely utilizes a lot of familiar tropes, so just keep that in mind. Thirdly, I've heard of some people say that the ending and some moments leading up to the conclusion feel quite predictable, and I kinda do get that. However, I must say again, Ruin, book 3, amazingly subverts the reader's expectations and puts a really phenomenal spin on a really well-known trope. Yes, this series might feel a bit predictable, I mean, this is classic fantasy at its core, but I have to repeat myself, Ruin really challenges this point of the series being too predictable. So yeah, the criticism has some merits, but I think that most readers, especially people that love fantasy, they wouldn't mind. And then lastly, it is worth mentioning that Malice, the first book in the series, is a bit rough around the edges. I personally, I really, really enjoyed reading this book and I thought it was brilliant, but the first half of this book can be a bit much. I mean, there are so many names and locations thrown at you in the beginning and you're not really sure what is going on. So I think it's worth mentioning that it will might take a bit of time for some of you to feel grounded in this world. However, at the halfway point at Malice, the plot and everything really starts to come together and then it just flows brilliantly. So please, if you're going to pick up the series, try to get to the end of Malice before giving up, because in my opinion, it is so worth it. Alright, let's move on to the ugly section, and I had to really think quite a bit about this, because I absolutely love, love, love this series. Now, the only real ugly aspect I could think of are, firstly, if you absolutely hate hate fantasy that can feel a bit classic or is too action focused, then this might be an ugly read for you. This book might feel very tropey to some of you and too action focused, and if you hate those things with a passion, then this might not be for you. What I'll say though is that I'm not a reader that enjoys action, and I still love this series, and I thought Gwen utilized tropes really well here, but I can imagine some might really be put off by that fact. Now secondly, it's worth mentioning that Malice is John Gwen's debut novel, and while I think the prose is pretty good, it is not Gwyn's best prose to date. Definitely in the Bloodthorn Saga, for example, you can definitely see that Gwyn has progressed as an author, so if you're looking for some incredibly beautiful prose, then you won't find it here and you might be disappointed. And then thirdly, the chapters in this series are very short, which is something I absolutely adore in fantasy. I mean, I love it so much when chapters are short. However, since the chapters are short, you will constantly change POVs, and I can imagine that maybe if you only read like one chapter a day, then this series might feel a bit disjointed, and it might be a book where you will have a challenging time to connect with some of the characters as you're constantly switching between the POVs. So as with almost any epic fantasy, then it's quite good to try to read a minimum of maybe 20 pages whenever you pick it up, just so you can start to connect with the characters a bit more. But really, I don't really have any major criticisms, and most of these points in the ugly sections could easily have been in the bad section as well. So that is it. I hope this video was helpful, and I really hope that you will pick up The Faithful and the Fallen, one of my all-time favorite series. If you read the series, let me know, and if you're going to pick it up, also let me know. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and a special thanks to my Patreon support I do here. I really appreciate it.